Hello, everybody. Let me get my mic over here so at least you can hear me. And uh, I hope everybody is doing well. And those in Texas, I feel for you, babes, because you're going through a lot. So anyway, welcome to the Facebook Live at the Purple Turtle Awesome Art Group. We love having you. And uh, so I've got some questions here, and we're going to cover those. And uh, let's start in on Deb. Deb just wrote and said, said this, when a piece is ready to sell and you have somebody who wants to buy, how do you know how to price it? It's hard to gauge by what other artists sell their pieces for when you are a novice and a beginner. And uh, Deb, this is a very good question, but it's going to take a lot of time to answer. And I won't take time on this because I have other questions, but I will tell you this. Um, you're right. It's hard. Number one, it's hard to do questions. Hey, it's hard to do, to know how to price your work even later, unless you have a formula. And so, and if anybody has anything you want to put it in the chat, please do so because I can look at it now. Um, but here's here's the thing: you're a beginner, so start low. But remember, people want a good deal, but they don't want cheap. So make sure you put in your uh, your materials. Like if it's framed, got to put that in. Now, as far as your time, right now, it's not worth a lot, not worth a whole lot. Hey, from Ireland. Hey, welcome. Um, it's not worth a whole lot at this point if you're brand new. What you want to do is to get your work out there and you want to get, you want to get seen. You want to have sales. Um so that's what I can say to you, and we may spend a whole time on another Facebook Live on how to do it. I know that's one of the things I'm going to cover in depth in the masterclass, and I always add things in the masterclass because I think it's really important to keep it fresh, but that's a biggie, and uh, everybody has lots of different ways. Hey, Real Rancho, hey. <laughs> um, everybody has different ways that they do it my way. Simple. I love simple and I don't want to have to think about it. So I hope that has helped. If not, give me a call. We'll talk. Anyway, the next question is, Judy says, you, you said that you only select transparent colors, but what do you use for white on your abstracts? I use white paint. I use white paint. If I do acrylics, um, Okay. You're welcome, babe. Um, I use a, a white acrylic paint if I want it really opaque. If I don't, I use gesso because it's semi-opaque. And uh, hi, Pennsylvania. I love Pennsylvania. Um, use gesso because it's semi-opaque. Or use the white of the canvas or the paper. If you're using oil, I just use titanium white. The reason I only use transparent colors is because I can make everything with them with black or white. So it makes it awesome, you know, makes it easy. And um, so I hope that's helped. Let me know if it didn't, and we'll, we'll go over it again. So number two, Paula. Paula has said, hey, California and Washington. My gosh, you guys are awesome. Um, Paula, you had said, besides thumbnail sketches, what are the most important art-making skills to practice every, every day outside of making actual paintings? It's a good question. And there were a lot of things I could have put, but there, but you asked for the most important. And the most important is 10 minutes of meditation every single day. Now, why is that important to your art? Because 
Okay, for many reasons. But 10 minutes, everybody has 10 minutes. Do it in the morning. And um, it, it's just, it's awesome. But what it does, what it does for me is it slows down my day. Everything seems to go a little slower. Plus, it centers you. It helps you find your creative voice and your center. When you approach the painting and you've meditated in the morning, guess what? You're already centered and you don't have to do that. And the painting is easier to speak to you because you are ready to listen. Ten minutes every day. It will do wonders, I promise. So, Maryland in central Indiana. Uh, oh, freezing here in Texas. Oh, gosh. Oh, I feel for you. You guys can all come here and sleep in the studio. <laughs> in Arizona and another from Washington. This is fabulous. Uh, all right. So, now, I hope that helped, Paula. I know that's not an answer that everybody kind of thinks is it, but... That's what helps me more than anything, is 10 minutes of meditation every day. So um, the start of my workshops are always spiritual, you bet, because there is a, there is, I well, people say I'm the bridge between art and spiritualization, and it is, because art comes from inside, guys. It's not out there. We get our ideas out there. But when you're painting, it actually comes from inside. And, uh, and, the, and that's, that's your voice. That's why people buy your work, because it's different, because it touches their heart. So, all right. So I hope that was good, Paula. Thanks. All right. Beverly said, um, I want to know, you always... Talk about where the eye goes. And uh, I, I, in New Jersey, I have snow too. We've got so much snow here, and it's awesome. But um, you want to know, how do I decide where the eye goes? Well, I'm going to show you. And you guys can probably, um, let's see, I hope. Oh, oh, I'm sorry about this, guys. I have to go back. You're going to see the whole thing. I have to go back because I was working on this just before. And uh, sorry. Oh, well, it's okay. You guys are awesome. All right. Where does your eye go in this painting? She knew because she planted this white piece of paper here. This is a this is Joanne Bonicelli in in Colorado Springs who came to a workshop and I think this was her very first painting. It's fabulous. It's really fabulous. And what makes it fabulous is that this was painted from the heart. And the piece of paper was was moved into the painting by painting over it. Um here is a painting that you saw last week. It did not work as far as I was concerned. But the center of interest, you can see, is up where the blue is. I decide the center of interest the very first thing. This is uh, one of my paintings, and it's a uh, journey into the unknown. It's actually me. Uh, I felt like that this was me. I was going into the unknown, and uh, and it's just... This is what I would call a uh, abstract realism, because you know it's a, a figure, but the figure is not really super plain. I wanted the eye to go to the head and to the pink bow, and uh, but you see how all the shapes are supporting; they're leading your eye to the center of interest. Now, this is just for fun, and I wanted to show you. Paintings that don't work sometimes turn out to be really good. And I took this picture after I had already drawn the uh, charcoal. And some of you have seen this, so excuse me on that. But what I did is I turned the painting upside down. If I'm going to redo a painting and paint over it, I still, if I, if I leave it 
right side up how I've been painting it. I'm still in that mode of that painting. So I sell flowers for some reason as a vase. And I want you to pay close attention though to the uh, the rectangular shape in the white part of the vase because that stays. And some of the other parts will stay too. The white part just on the right of the vase and a couple of the drippy parts on the right will stay. And um, so I've decided, okay, I'm going to do, I'm going to do flowers. And so I'm just digging in. I am throwing paint. Uh, guys, I am having fun. And that's what I want you to do is I want you to relax into the, into the painting to have fun. And here it's, it's becoming a little bit more apparent I've decided that this is going to be a flower that's going to be the center of interest right there. And I've worked it a little bit more. I've got more and I've got more. And notice I've got the background colors. Um, and then this ended up being the completed painting. But the triangle and the vase stayed. The whites to the right stayed. There's some other little pieces in there that stayed. So... Don't be discouraged if a painting doesn't work. Just turn it upside down and paint something over it. Now, the reason I put this painting in is because the center of interest is the flower. The bit, the flower, and I don't think you can see my, I don't think you can see my cursor. Um, but guess what, guys? It is right, right in the middle of the painting. I mean, that, that canvas, it's right in the middle. But because of the weight on the right side, it doesn't matter. It works. So I decide my center of interest, though, first. And that's what I wanted Beverly to see. And when I'm drawing an abstract, where does your eye go right here? I already know, Beverly, where that center of interest is going to be before I start painting. Now, I will have to say a couple of times my center of interest might change. This is uh, one that I'm going to possibly be doing uh, in the master class. I will take an abstract and I will do it from start to finish because I'm going to do that this time because I think it's important for the people to see how it's done from the concept to the very end. And so I don't know which one of these I'm going to do. And just so you know, in the in the master class, this is another thing that we do. Uh, the master class is coming up March 11th, and it's not out for people to be able to sign up yet, but it will be soon. But this just gives you an idea is that we take. I took the photo of one of the masters on the right side and did the uh, the thumbnail from that. And look, I've got a great abstract, but it was from the master's painting. So, and so this is what it ended up being, is that this is the thumbnail for that. I may even do that one instead of the others. I think I'll let the group decide what they want to see. So, um, all right. The next question is this. And it is... Tina said that sudden pain of fear. Let me go back because I want to. Okay. That sudden pain of fear that freezes me. How do I get past it? That's a really good question. And I know that there's not a soul here on this, sh on this call that has ever felt that way, right? Nah. All of us have feel this way. You get that fear and it absolutely freezes you. And so what are they, what is she to do about it? Because she says, when I'm about three quarters done and wonder if I should go in a direction that will mean leaving where I am. So there are several things going on here. And it is that, number one, is the painting not working? Have you decided the painting just isn't going to work now? And if so, this is though when you ask questions. What do you need painting? Where do you, 
Uh, where do you want me to go? What, what needs to be pulled out? What colors need to be put on? You sit back, you relax, you do this. This is what I do. Now, there are times that you think the painting's never going to work and you got to wrestle it to the ground. Or there are times that you turn the painting upside down and start all over. But you use the word fear. So the other thing is that are you asking the question of out of fear of finishing the painting? Are you asking that question? I hear this in every workshop. I have done it myself, and I bet it has been in this uh, purple turtle. And the question is, here's the, here's the statement. Here's the statement that it is. And it is this. I really like this painting, but it isn't working. And I don't know what to do because I don't want to ruin it. I don't want to ruin it. I've got news for you guys. You cannot ruin what does not work. So I know where you're coming from. I know where you're coming from. You've got this and you like this little corner down here, or you like the whole thing, but you're looking at it and you say, it doesn't hold together. You can't ruin what isn't working. It's like pulling a cake out of the oven and it's still running. It's not a cake. You're not going to serve it. So you can't ruin what isn't working. Now, the key here then is to understand that and say, hey, I'm free to, to try that color over there. I'm, I'm free to put this line in here. What if it doesn't work? It doesn't work. You paint over it. It's no big deal. Now, when you get down to the end of the painting and you're looking at it and you're thinking, okay, it's not quite there. What do I do to pull it together? That's a different set of circumstances because then, um, <laughs> I love it. Oh, I keep baking. I don't want a runny cake. You got it. You got it. Um, what I do at the very end of a painting, it's usually, well, it's almost working, but it's not. And there may be a line, there may be a smoothing of an edge, but that's when you sit back, you have a glass of wine, you sit back and you say, hmm, what are you trying to tell me? And you're talking to the painting and you're literally listening because the painting will let you know. How will it let you know? With a gut feel, with an idea. Oh, I think I need a line over there. Hmm, wonder where that came from. Listen to yourself. Listen to your work. It will happen. The fear will go away when you start believing in you. And that's the key. Believing in yourself as an artist it's huge because we always wonder, is our work good enough? And so I hope this has helped. It's been an awesome, awesome thing of uh, for me to be with you. And I love your comments. And uh, did you see the face in the first painting you showed us? Actually, I didn't. I did not see that. And, uh, but... If you've got another question, put it in the chat really quick. I will answer it, but otherwise I'm going to, to close it here. If I don't answer your questions, then please just put them in the next. Hey, let's, we do this every Thursday at noon, mountain time. I love it. I love you guys. Take care, post, be safe, stay warm, and uh, uh, I love you. Bye. Thank you.